Okay, welcome back to the C++ uh, lectures that I'm doing. This is the third lecture, so if you missed the first two, you might want to go back and check those out. We're not very far into C++ programming yet, but every lecture is going to have a little bit more added to it, and you definitely need to know the stuff previously in order to go forward. So with that being said, I'm going to create yet another new project using Visual Studio. 2015 version, Win32 Visual C++ template, and console application, and I'm going to keep the default name since these are just throwaway programs anyways. Default settings, yes. Keep all these defaulted. Finish. Start the program. Just like every other program we've done so far, we're going to leave everything the same except for include IO stream, input output stream. And what we're going to do today is we're going to teach a little bit about if statements and comparison operators in C. Again, uh, just follow along with what I'm doing, type it all in. Otherwise, you'll never put these to muscle memory and it's going to be harder later down the road. So I'm going to create a couple of variables um, integer uh, number one and number two. We're going to be putting these uh, variables through the keyboard and store them into memory and do some comparisons with them. So I've created two variables of integer data type. Let's print these out by, well let's ask the user to enter the two digits. Enter two digits and I will tell you the relationship backslash in whatever oh see in C++ the Visual Studio development environment you can tell that I did something wrong because when I hit enter it tabbed over more as if it's continuing on this on the line above it it's not I'm done with that line I just forgot to put a semicolon so put the semicolon in you hit enter and it's back to um, lined up with the line previously and we can see in these two we've used C in before but now we're going to use them together with two extraction operators extraction uh, of number one variable and number two variable all in one line before we'd have to do two standard C ins to make that happen okay so now that we've done that let's do some comparisons we're going to do if statements, and all if statements start with the word if, all lowercase, case sensitive. If number one is equal to number two, and you can hit the tab button twice and it'll go to the end, I'm going to go ahead and hit enter here and open and close brackets. So what we have here is a body of that if statement. If you did not put the brackets in that if statement, it would actually read the one, the very first line below the if statement and execute that only. But with the brackets here, you're safer to um, make sure that you know what exactly is in that body of the if statement. I'll, I'll explore more in a few minutes and let you know what I'm talking about. So if number one is equal to number two, let's just display that. And we will say, um, we're just going to use the word equal. We're going to keep it real simple. Hit the semicolon. So that's one if statement. Let's go ahead and put our little pause statement in so we can debug this as we go and build this program to see if our pieces all work together. So remember, I'm going to create a dummy variable called pause and see in a from the keyboard just to pause the program. And don't forget, you can add code or comments to your code so you know what's going on. Let's go ahead and run this and just test our first bit of code to see if it works. Remember F5 or debug run. So I hit F5 now and enter two digits I'll tell you the relationship. The way that we processed our two digits if you look here number one number two as I hit number one, we'll call it 15, I can do space and do number two, and or I can do enter and do number two as well. It's just, it's just the way it works. So I'm going to hit enter now, 
and nothing happened, which is perfectly fine. So I'm gonna hit another number because that's my pause portion. And I'm gonna run it again. I'm gonna hit F5 and I'm gonna test my condition if they were the same. Number one was 10, number two is 10. Let's, let's do it that way. Equal, see? So we know that that bit of code worked the way we wanted it to. And that's, that's the whole point of, of, of doing codes, of writing your code in bits and pieces so you don't get too far and too distracted from what you might be doing before you find a major error. So let's put a couple more comparison if statements in there and go from there. If number one is greater than number two, As you can see, I'm just putting some generic statements in here. Uh, if number one is less than number two, and finally, I am going to show you what the not equal is. If number one does not equal, it's an exclamation point and then equal sign. Number two. Oops, excuse me, no space there. C variable names are case sensitive. I'm going to put a backslash in there because it might execute along with another if statement just to give it a little cleaner look. Put a couple new lines in there number one does not equal number two okay and of course we have a return zero at the very end now when we execute this we can execute it a few times I'm gonna hit F5 first let's see if we have any errors now enter the two digits we'll do 10 and 25 hit enter number one is less than number two that is a true statement number one does not equal number two that is also a true statement let's try it again F5 to run it Let's do uh, 15 and 7. Number 1 is greater than number 2. True statement. Number 1 does not equal number 2. And if you're going to do uh, some debugging, you might want to also check to see if they are equal. 10 and 10. Equal, and it does not show the not equal. So there's our comparison operators in C++. Very simply done. And don't forget that the brackets contain the body of that if statement. You can add multiple statements. You can say they're equal and you can add more statements. Whatever you want to do within those brackets is fine. You can even declare other variables. Integer j equals 10. See out the j variable. Whatever you want to do within these brackets is perfectly fine. If you define a variable within these brackets though, that variable is only good within these brackets. As soon as I try to use that J variable that we declared here, oops, forgot the semicolon there. As soon as you try to use the J variable outside of these brackets, it's going to give you a compile time error or at least some sort of error. So let's let me just test that right now. If they are equal, it should do the equality and spit out the J number, which is 10 as well. So let's go ahead and run that, F5. Two digits, we're gonna uh, make them equal. 89 and 89, enter. Equal, equality, then the number 10, just like we wanted. Now let's close this. I'm gonna just hit an arbitrary number and close it. Uh, I'm gonna try to use that J variable somewhere down here. I'm just gonna go ahead and print it. Print it out. See out to the screen. This is J. And then I'm gonna I'm going to concatenate. That's what the insertion operator does. The actual variable name J, which it doesn't even pop up on my menu here. If you see the menu here, that's kind of a leading indicator that it's not gonna work. But I'm gonna go ahead and hit F5 anyways. And it's going to tell me there are build errors. I do not want to run from the last time, so hit no. And you're going to get the error here. J 
undeclared identifier. It has not been declared, so that will not work. That will not compile because J was declared within the brackets of this. The lower brackets, so if I declared J somewhere else, I'm going to control X or cut that from the if statement, put it outside the brackets out here. Now there should be no issues. If I hit F5 now, it should compile. There it is. So let's do uh, four, and then I'll show you the enter button works for equality, equality, and everything that we wanted to print out. Worked perfectly fine. So you've learned a little bit about scope, the scope of the variable within the brackets. You learned if statements, and you've also learned how to do comparison operators in C++ programming. Don't forget to compare equality is two equal signs, not one. If you do one equal sign, it's a common error. It's not illegal, but it's a common error because you'll actually assign, if I actually took one of these away, this statement will actually assign number one equal to number two, whatever that might be. And if that number is anything but zero, it's going to be a true statement according to that if statement logic. So make sure that you do the double equals when you mean are they equal rather than assign them to be equal. Very common mistake. And this is our third C++ program. I hope you enjoyed it.